One of the many problems facing the planet these days is ocean acidification. This issue, its stakeholders, and its consequences may spell disaster in the near future for many species, particularly the rambunctious colonies of sea otters which inhabit the ocean. Ocean acidification occurs with the depletion of calcium carbonate in an area of the vast sea. Essentially, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is absorbed into the ocean. The CO2 reacts with the water and forms carbonic acid, chemically shown as H2CO3, which then dissociates into a hydrogen proton and a bicarbonate ion. Now, there is an extra hydrogen proton, which attaches itself to a separate carbonate ion and forms another bicarbonate ion. The formation of these bicarbonate ions is decreasing the pH of the ocean and making the water more acidic. The chemical aspect of this equation may seem confusing, but it can be explained in simpler terms. Carbon dioxide filters into the ocean. The carbonic acid that forms is broken down into a hydrogen proton and a bicarbonate ion. The free hydrogen protons then combine with dissolved carbonate ions, transforming them into bicarbonate ions and further acidifying the ocean. The importance of the changing water chemistry lies in the carbonate ion. On its own, it would have become a chemical called aragonite, which numerous organisms use during their life cycles to build their shells and exoskeletons. When the carbon is transformed into a bicarbonate ion, the concentration of dissolved carbonate diminishes. The dissipation of carbon affects the ability of some organisms to produce and maintain their shells. There are many marine organisms that rely on calcium carbonate, both directly and indirectly. Creatures like mollusks, crabs, and corals need the carbon in order to form their shells or exoskeletons. Without it, their shells will start to decay. As a result of diminished resources, shell-building organisms will become smaller and their populations may decrease. As the smaller organisms are increasingly affected, the creatures they are prey to will be harmed as well. One example of an animal with a huge stakeholder in this situation would be the sea otters. Sea otters are a threatened species for many reasons. They have been hunted for hundreds of years, so much so that some subspecies were thought to have gone extinct. Their habitats are encroached upon by pollution of the ocean. And now, the availability of their prey is decreasing, since they mostly feed on crabs, mussels, sea urchins, and oysters. A decrease in the sea otter population will affect the many ecosystems these animals have a part in. Crabs have a negative impact on seagrass beds and the otters keep the crab population in check so that they cannot completely destroy that ecosystem. Also, the sea star population has been decreasing, allowing their prey, the sea urchins, to increase in number and begin to destroy more of the kelp forests which they graze upon. By eating the sea urchins, the otters are essential in saving yet another population of producers. Because of this, sea otters are considered as contributors to the large scale of ecosystem-based management. There are multiple stakeholders regarding the problem of ocean acidification. The decline of sea otters is only one. As was previously mentioned, a number of ocean ecosystems will be harmed, either directly or indirectly, by the consequences of ocean acidification. Thousands of marine species could potentially be wiped out as well. One example of these stakeholders is the coral reef ecosystem. Corals are shell-building organisms and are harmed by the effects of ocean acidification. Their habitat is home to over 1 million marine species, many of which would be without a home if the corals were to decrease sufficiently, which is all too possible. Some people may be thinking that they can ignore ocean acidification as an ocean problem, not a human problem, but this is false. Another extremely important stakeholder is the fishing industry. Multiple economies, lifestyles, and jobs depend on organisms like mollusks that are being destroyed by ocean acidification. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has summed up much of the issue. More than a billion people worldwide rely on food from the ocean as their primary source of protein. Many jobs and economies in the U.S. and around the world depend on the fish and shellfish in our oceans. If steps are not taken to lessen the effects of ocean acidification, it could cost billions of dollars and thousands of jobs. Ocean acidification is dangerous for this planet as a whole. It relays the same message that humans have been hearing for years. We need to reduce carbon pollution by burning fewer fossil fuels and using more renewable energy. The stakes have been laid out. A solution is possible. Question is, will we listen this time?